I'm not gonna give up. If it takes years, hopefully in five years, 10, whatever, 20, I'm just hoping it all pays off. And then I'll have had some cool memories at the very least. Good morning. We're gonna do a little makeups, um, a little catch-up sesh. I wanna take you guys on a hike and we'll do a little uh, conversation and catch-up there. Sounds good? Okay. Hello. <sighs> okay, I wanted to, I'm not gonna go through my entire makeup um, thing like I've done before, but I just wanted to start the day off with a couple thoughts. Um, ooh, by the way, my piano's been a little lonely lately. There, there she is. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I do love playing the piano and I've abandoned, I'm, I've, I've neglected the piano for a minute now while I've been trying to figure out this new YouTube rhythm. So I, my favorite thing is playing rap songs on the piano. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some Tupac, Eminem, um, just all the, cause there's, there's tons of rap songs that have awesome piano bits. So that's my favorite. And then I do like playing very peaceful, beautiful songs as well. So I'll sprinkle some of that in. I'm trying to figure out how I want to sprinkle that in to my videos, but yeah, stick around. I wanted to start off just with a couple thoughts that I've had this week. I'm four proper weeks into taking this YouTube thing full time, learning the editing, doing my own thing. I noticed myself getting frustrated. Per usual, I'm, it's human nature, getting frustrated with not getting a rhythm down, a schedule, when am I gonna film this or that, editing, editing pains and growth and all that stuff. And now, I feel like I'm getting into this kind of rhythm of comfortability where I am comfortable taking the camera wherever, I will plop it down and film, you know? And I didn't feel like that at the beginning of this. Four weeks ago, I was still feeling a little reserved. And I don't know if embarrassed is the right word, but just definitely reserved. Um, and feeling like if people were around, like around the house or when I'm outside the house, just strangers, I would feel self, really self-conscious still filming. And today I feel like I'm more friendly. I'm friends with the camera, which makes me sound like a camera whore. But no, I think anybody who wants to get into this, I've realized that you gotta, you gotta just kind of become friends with the camera. It becomes your best friend, right? In addition to you all who are watching. Hopefully we become pals. You get to know me a bit better. Um, and vice versa, in the comments, whatever. I'm trying to sound like a YouTuber here. Most of the time in starting anything new, you have to be bad before you're good. You ha And people wanna jump straight to the good, the expertise, the easy part, where it's like, yes, I feel comfortable, I'm good at this now. That doesn't come without feeling really uncomfortable and feeling like maybe you're a little bit bad at it. And I could tell in some of my some of my earlier videos, I didn't look as comfortable or I wasn't, you know, the quality isn't as great. And that just with time, it gets better and better. You just have to persevere. You have to commit to the process. I can really feel it paying off. It's this intrinsic thing that you can't really explain. It just happens if you don't give up and, and you just push through those painful and comfortable moments of trying to get good, right? And by no means am I good or excellent or pro yet, but that's the goal. I know that maybe in 20 videos, I will really be there and I will be in a rhythm and, and in a state that doesn't even compare to where I am now, right? So patience, perseverance, commitment, good attitude, you can get good. My other thought was last week, um, I mentioned in my video how, oh, I guess I'm trying to be a vlogger when that kid screamed vlogger at me on the, on the street. Um, and in my mind, my imposter syndrome, of course, is like, 
I'm no vlogger. I am not a vlogger yet. And, and then, so I was thinking this week, what is that marker? What is that thing that it's gonna make me feel like this is it, this is real, right? And I was like, is it when I hit a thousand subscribers and I'm eligible for monetization that I then will feel comfortable saying, I am a content creator, I am a vlogger, because I didn't feel like, I feel still weird and uncomfortable saying that I am that, because I'm, I'm at the beginning of this journey. And, but then this week I thought, you know what? In so many podcasts and in so many um, videos where they give advice, I've heard that in order to become something, you have to embody it. Sometimes you just have to claim it, like really claim it, right? And sometimes it can feel cocky or overconfident, but no, I was thinking this week that, listen, I am spending hours and hours and hours every week filming, editing, scripting all the things i'm fully in it and i deserve and this is just for me to have more confidence i deserve to call myself a vlogger now i am a content creator even if i say it in here right even if we tell ourselves like whether you have 200 subscribers 400 whatever if if you are spending many of your waking hours trying to make this a success why not say, yes, I am a content creator. I, you're literally doing that. And even, and you know what? I think the insecurity was that I'm not making money. I'm not making money yet. Why? I can't even, I can't call myself that. But the money will come. The money follows the hard work and the commitment and the love. And I have all those things right now. So I'm going to claim it. I said, I am a content creator and manifest it that way, right? So I'm the content creator. I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup because I don't really have anything to talk about right now with y'all. And I'll take you with me on my drive outside. We'll go into nature and we'll have a real conversation. Let's go. like 30 percent um battery left so i gotta hustle i'm gonna make this quick wow if this could be my office every single day that would be amazing <laughs> i think i enjoy filming outside much more hello can you guys see me hello lift my hat up a little bit this is week five friends if you watch my previous weeks of can i be a youtuber you will hear about some of my struggles, some of my insecurities, my frustrations with the beginning of this process because as I was saying earlier before I left the house, most of the time, actually like 99% of the time when you're starting something new, you gotta be bad at it before you're good. And not necessarily bad, just a little green when it's a little creaky, like when the wheels are rusty and then the more you do, and the more I film, the more I edit, it feels like it's becoming a little bit of a well-oiled thing, you know? By no means anywhere close to, oh, I got this, it's a breeze, but it certainly gets easier. I lost maybe seven subscribers in the last week, 
but then I've gained subscribers as well. And I think it's been um, hard to not attach myself to subscribers and the numbers, right? Anytime I lose a subscriber or two or three or four or like seven this week, let's say, I'm like, why don't you wanna be my friend? <laughs> yeah, it's easy to get emotionally attached to the subscribers, just like likes, comments, that whole world of social media, right? But then I came around to the idea and the acceptance that my people will find me. And the beginning of this channel, as I said before, it started with James, my fiance and I, eating Vietnamese food. He was speaking some Vietnamese. That is wildly different from what I'm doing right now. I have to remind myself of that sometimes, is that when I lose subscribers, it could be people who followed us for that reason. And now that I'm doing more of the starting over stuff and self-growth content, it's just more me, hello. <laughs> Maybe people don't resonate with that as much. And so the people who are trickling off, the subscribers that I'm losing, I just tell myself every time that that just makes more room for my people, the right people to find me. I can't lie. Every time I get a new subscriber, I have a little bit of like a, yeah. So these are the ebbs and flows of content creation and YouTube, just the ebbs and flows. And I'm learning that the better that you can just flow like a river through the journey and through this, this adventure of, are people gonna resonate with my content? Is my content gonna speak to people or is it not? It can become very personal. You're putting yourself out there. But now I'm kind of learning, I need a little bit more equanimity kind of just like r remaining like this in my attitude <laughs> throughout this whole adventure, or else I'm just gonna get so drained by the ups and downs, you know? And I've, and I've heard a lot of successful YouTubers say, there are gonna be peaks and valleys. And the people who make it or kind of get to the other side of, okay, I'm starting to see success, they really stick through it in the valleys. Like it's that commitment and that consistence in the dips that is what matters. I don't wanna give up. I'm not gonna give up. If it takes years, hopefully in five years, 10, whatever, 20, I'm just hoping it all pays off. And then I'll have had some cool memories at the very least. It is so peaceful out here, guys. You know what people need to do? We gotta get out into nature more. We gotta listen to the birds chirp, the wind blowing in our hair, stillness. I could meditate out here. I feel like I'm, I'm gonna meditate after I turn this camera off. Should we have a moment of silence? Some serenity? Do you feel good? I wish I could take you and plop you right here next to me. Focus less on the numbers and more on your why and the quality of the content and your love for it. Like, why did I start doing this in the first place, right? And just put the metrics away and just focus on creating. And then all of a sudden the, the numbers come. Like I'm, like I'm sitting in front of a freaking tree, you know, looking out at red rocks. There's nothing better than this moment. This right here, this is the adventure. This right here is the process that this end goal of mine that I want, whatever it is, success and subscribers and numbers, money, that could very quickly ruin this whole experience because this right here is what it's about. I get to sit here and talk to you guys and how could I not soak up this moment and just be grateful for it. And instead of resisting that tension so much of, oh, this is where I wanna be and this is where I am and there's a gap, I'm learning every single day to just embrace it. And that sounds cliche, but what is the alternative, right? And I've always kind of been the person, I've always kind of been a person where I need to see the end. I need to know where I'm going in order to take steps to get there, to even take that first step. And oh my gosh, this YouTube thing, this whole content creation thing, this new venture completely challenges everything that I've ever known, that I've ever tried to be, because there's so much unknown. I don't know where this is going. I don't really have, I don't have a blueprint. 
I can only kind of plan and map out a little bit of a vision, but it's a lot of learning to let go and it's a lot of letting go of, okay, everything's gotta be planned out perfectly. I need to know this is gonna be successful. That kind of mentality I've let go of. I do believe now that YouTube is to serve people. They only, people only go to YouTube because they need something whether it is to feel less alone, which is what I'm trying to accomplish with my channel, or whether they need to build something, they need to learn how to do something. People are coming to YouTube for a reason. And so the why has to be about the people. And so I think as long as I focus on that, then it'll lead me to where I'm meant to go. Anyway, thanks for joining me for week five. See you next week, guys. Mwah.